Methane is the biggest problem with ruminant agriculture in terms of climate change. The cows produce methane, which is quite potent and has a large warming effect on the planet. They are also taking forage from areas of the country that can't grow food directly for human consumption, converting it into really high quality human food. But that methane is a real problem. It's really important for farmers to be part of the solution for climate change. We've got the responsibility for feeding over 9 billion people. We've released a lot of emissions whilst we're producing that food, so we've got the opportunity to reduce them emissions. We've also got the opportunity to take carbon out of the atmosphere and store it in our soils. And finally, we've also got the area and the landmass where lots of the wildlife and biodiversity live. So it's really important that farmers collectively are incentivized to do the right thing in the right area. We've came across a company called Mutrel. They developed a garlic and citrus product that could reduce methane emissions. And we were the first company to start feeding that product to our cows. It really appealed to us because we care about the environment and the climate. So we wanted to do whatever we could to reduce our carbon footprint and to be part of developing them solutions for reducing methane emissions. It's around half of our carbon footprint is the emissions that the cows belch. And so to be able to get involved in that industry and to reduce our emissions by 30% so early on in the development of them sorts of products is very exciting. It's easy to say cows are polluters, but if we look at it from the other side, we need them. Recruiting the cows to reduce their methane buys us, as humans, time to change our habits. So the cow's main feed is grass silage that's grown in the local area. Then we feed byproducts like oilseed rape, which is from cooking oil, there's whey permeate, which is from cheese, and then rolled wheat that's for feed, not human consumption. And we mix the mutual in at that stage. So it's less than 1% of the diet, it's a really small proportion of the feed, and they just eat it, kind of like a smoothie, but quite a dry smoothie. The Scottish Rural University College came to the farm every week. They measured a 30% reduction in methane in periods where we were feeding Mutrel compared to not feeding Mutrel. We looked at what could possibly work in mitigating the methane from cows without harming the cows or even ideally boosting the health at the same time. And garlic was really our core competence. And we looked at could garlic play a role in this? And it worked really well. We then synergized it with other botanicals to further improve the efficacy. And that's the product we have today. It's a product we've seen that can reduce methane, improve milk yields, improve health parameters, all valuable things for the animal, for the farmer, and for the environment. Personally, we wanted to run a sustainable business. We didn't want to have run a business and have made money, but then to look back over our lifetimes and have regretted what we've done because we've had a negative impact on the planet whilst doing it. I grew up on a dairy farm and we produced milk and we didn't really realise that we were releasing all these emissions in the form of methane. That became very much popularised in the press and we're kind of thinking, are we actually part of the problem here? And then because we were part of the problem, that gave us the opportunity to engage in the solutions and feel better about what we're doing. Like the number one question on most farmers' lips is, oh, what about price, what about price? Because they're incentivized to produce milk for the least price possible. They're told how much they get paid for their milk after they've sold it. And so if they produce it too expensively, they're going out of business. So they're very, very cost sensitive. The beautiful thing about feeding Mutrel is that you can create and sell carbon credits that offsets the cost. And so that means that for most farmers, it's not going to cost them anything and not put their business at a higher risk. We need the farmers' help. So why shouldn't they get a reward for helping us save the climate, right? They're part of a social contract. We produce, but we've got to do that as sustainable as possible. And in the presence of such technologies, that's what we want to be putting in. Just pay us enough so that we can do that. When we started to do it, we were firstly nervous that we might have garlic-flavoured milk and there might be some side effects. The only effects that we've had have been positive, so there's been less mastitis, there's been less flies bothering the cows, especially through the summer. And so that's been a really big benefit for us as farmers because the cows are less bothered, they're not kicking in the parlour, they're not being bitten. We want to produce a product that we feel good about producing. We want to produce a product that our customers feel good about consuming. So if we're at the leading edge of helping develop some of these solutions to reduce some of the emissions or to improve the sustainability of dairy, then we're proud of what we're doing. Our message is treat it with the urgency that it needs. Work on it with 
what we call internally climate speed. Not government speed, board level speed, academic speed, but climate speed. We can see every year it's getting warmer, our chances to mitigate this are getting smaller and smaller. And within that, each player works with us hand in hand, whether it's designing regulation, whether it is designing market mechanisms or financial models, whether it is designing the optimal experience for the farmer or the optimal experience for those cows. We're here, we're open for business, and we would love to work with people who can really make a difference.